my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today we celebrate Monday Thursday. It's a day of emotions and memories. And I am so privileged to be with you on this Monday Thursday to speak about priesthood. I am a priest for 44 years. I was ordained a priest on 21st December 1980. And often people have asked to me, what do you feel about your priesthood? Are you a happy priest? Are you really satisfied about your priesthood in priestly ministry? With all my sincerity <laughs> and full of joy, I would like to share with you. I am so happy to be a priest of Jesus. I never and ever felt sorry that I have become a priest of Jesus. Monday Thursday commemorate washing of the feet, institution of Eucharist and institution of priesthood. I think that these three moments are interconnected, interrelated. There is a beautiful picture which I would like to recollect. Certainly I do not know who has drawn that picture, but a copy of which is in our Bishop's house in Trichur. That picture depicts Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And Jesus kneeling to kiss the feet of one of his disciples. And a beautiful symbolism, under the feet there is a pond where collected water. And Jesus, kneeling to kiss the feet, the face of Jesus is reflected in the water. I have often reflected over this picture. And I would like to define priesthood. It is the depiction of the face of Jesus in a human being. Jesus came to this world to fulfill the will of the Father, the redemption of human race. And the most crucial moment of his mission is his sacrifice on Calvary, his crucifixion. But in order to enter into the mystery of passion, Jesus fulfilling the command of Moses commemorated the Old Testament Passover. And if you check the Gospel of John, it's a different way of celebrating the Passover. Jesus first washed the feet of his disciples, including 
Judas who betrayed him. And washing the feet of the disciples has a lot of connection to priesthood. Every priest is called to the mission and ministry of service. Every priest by his vocation is destined to serve the people of God. If you know the history of the Old Testament, washing the feet was the work of a slave. And Jesus take this symbol and connect it with the priesthood. Priesthood is the work of washing the feet, serving the people of God like a slave. And Jesus gave a new meaning to priesthood in the New Testament. Old Testament priesthood was counted to be a sign of a royal dignity. Even in Catholic tradition, sometimes we say royal priesthood. <laughs> that royal priesthood comes from the Old Testament background. But Jesus wanted to give a new meaning for his priesthood in New Testament. He says priesthood is not a domination over the people, rather washing the feet of the people of God as a slave. Last year, when Holy Father washed the feet of 12. He wanted to select people who are on the margins, who are not with good repute, sometimes with very bad repute. And the Holy Father was telling priesthood is to become a service to the limits of the people, to the limitations of our poor people. And the Holy Father calls it, it is a vocation to go to the margins. Margin symbolically means people less privileged, people not counted, people not noted, and last year, Holy Father took special care to call people from the street to wash their feet on Monte Thursa Day. The word Monte Thursa Day comes from the Latin expression mandatum novum the new mandate. <laughs> what is the newness of Jesus' mandate to priesthood? It is a total surrender to the service of the poorest of the poor. Very often priesthood is counted in our own times and our own culture, a matter of dignified service. Very often we have made priesthood like Old Testament, a royal priesthood. But a priesthood according to the mind of Jesus 
and Holy Father Pope Francis says, according to the heart of Jesus, is a service to the margins, a service to the less privileged, a service to the unfortunate, a service to people who are never counted, never noted. As a priest, I would like to tell you my mission is to serve Jesus through serving the people of God through three ministries. The ministry of praying, the ministry of preaching, the ministry of pastoring. A priest, first of all, is a man of prayer. People would like to see the priest as a man of prayer. And I would like to call your attention to the life of St. John Maria Viani, the patron of diocesan priests, the patron of seminarians. John Maria Viani was sent to a parish called the Arts in France, a parish which was then locked down. The priest of Arts had left the priesthood and went out. And it was a sheep flock without shepherd. And when Vianney reached there, there was nobody in the church. The church was locked down. The church was closed down. When Vianney started his ministry, there was nobody in the church, even for Sunday Mass. But later, arts became a center of pilgrimage. Arts became a center of pilgrimage not because of the miracles, rather they found a priest who stood and knelt before the tabernacle, adoring Jesus. A praying priest only can conquer the heart of the people. A priest should become, first of all, a man of prayer. Very often, I have the feeling, activities and programs of the parish make the priest a man having no time to sit before the tabernacle. The people of ours came to the church because they found a priest who stood before the tabernacle, who knelt before the tabernacle, who cried before the tabernacle. Only a praying priest who can conquer the heart of the people. People would like to see a priest in the church, in the confessional, caring the people, praying for the people. Recently, Holy Father Pope Francis said, our priests are very much activity oriented. And he said, we should be actively involved to the needs of the people. But sometimes this overactivity makes us not to be 
at the tabernacle, before the tabernacle, to pray for the needs of the people. So a priest becomes holy by his prayer, by his presence before the tabernacle. John Maria Vianney always found before the tabernacle. Later, he was sitting long hours in the confessional. He never went out of the church. He even slept in the church. So, a priest should make the church his home, where he should feel at home in the presence of Jesus. He is interceding for the people. In the Old Testament, there is a beautiful <laughs> moment. Joshua was guiding the battle. And Joshua was leading the soldiers to wage war against the enemies. But Moses never went to the war site. Rather, he remained on the mountain and raised his hands up to God and cried and prayed that Joshua kills the enemies. Joshua wins the battle. I would like to tell you, today we celebrate the commemoration of the institution of Eucharist and or priesthood. A priest should find more time to be before the tabernacle, kneeling down before the tabernacle, raising their hands, interceding for their people. The second ministry of priesthood is preaching. My dear friends, priesthood and preaching cannot be separated. Every priest is called to preach the word of God. Preaching is not preaching from the pulpit only. Preaching is also teaching. Guiding our people. I consider one of the disadvantages of the church today that there is nobody to teach our people. <laughs> nobody is taking the courage to guide our people, telling the truth, telling the doctrine of the church, interpreting the Holy Scripture. According to the history, John Maria Vianney was taking hours, hours to prepare his homily. And his homily was the most powerful weapon by which he was teaching the people. Arts was a place where people left Catholic faith. They had never and ever come to the church. But Vianney started preaching and teaching. And later, Vianney's homilies became the most catechetical instructions to the people. He took the courage to correct people. Very often, I have the feeling we don't preach courageously because we don't live what we preach. Vianney did not have any limitation 
to tell to the face of the people that they are wrong. He had the courage to correct them because he had a life which is authentic. Recently, Holy Father Pope Francis said, authority of a priest over the people is not the authority to dominion over them, rather to put an authentic life before them. The life of a priest should become an authentic interpretation of the word of God. Preaching and teaching shall not be only through mouth, but but through our deeds. Mother Teresa never spoke more than five minutes. When she came to our seminary while we were students, she spoke only three minutes. (laughs) We were so surprised that she stopped after three minutes. She came to Trichu and I happened to translate her speech. When I started to translate, the whole crowd of one lakh people shouted, Father, we don't want any translation. Mother Teresa spoke, we don't want translation. Without translation, people understood. And the preaching ministry becomes authentic, not by words, but by witness. The life shall be our homily. The life should interpret the mysteries of the word of God. And thirdly, a priest is called a shepherd. Guide the people. Shepherding. Very often the shepherding has become some kind of bureaucratic way of administering things. The office of the parish priest is called the bureau. <laughs> and sometimes we tell people, if anybody needs anything, come to my bureau. <laughs> I think it is not the way Jesus taught the disciples. Vianney, when started his ministry in the Church of Arts, nobody was there. And he was going to bars, he was going to dancing clubs, and people were surprised to see him. (laughs) He said, you are my sheep. I have come to call you. Later people started flocking together attend his Kohli Mass, to listen his sermons. Priesthood is not an office of administration. Very often priesthood is, is misunderstood. According to me, it is very much misunderstood as a matter of administration. The effectiveness of a priest is measured by achievements. Very often, when a priest is transferred, people remember that he has constructed the tower of the church. (laughs) He has modified the community hall. He has made things very different. I tell you, achievements are to be counted, but more needed is accompaniment. Jesus very clearly said, go to the lost sheep. I have often asked to my priest, Father, have you made any investigation regarding the people who are not coming to the church? And many said, no, no. 
we are serving the people who are coming to the church. Very true, it is most important. But sometimes we forget. We forget to go to the lost sheep. And the beautiful parable Jesus taught in the Gospel of John, a shepherd going out to search out the lost sheep. He had a hundred sheep and one is lost, one is missed out and he went to search it out. And our ministry should have an extra mile. This extra mile, according to me, is a search for the lost sheep. And the present Holy Father is very much insisting on this ministry for the lost sheep. Holy Father very often tells that our ministry should not be limited to people who come to the church. Definitely it is important. But it should go beyond the walls of the church, the lost sheep. My dear brother and sister, brothers and sisters, priesthood is a gift from God. And every priest is the car is carrying the gift of priesthood. Gift of priesthood. And this gift of priesthood is a continuation of the mission and ministry of Jesus. Sanctifying, teaching, and also pastoring. We have to pray for more vocations. Jesus very clearly said, even during his time, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray that more laborers are come, are called to serve the Lord. Priesthood has its own challenges, but at the same time, the challenges has a horizon, a horizon till the end of the earth, till the end of the time. And I have always a feeling, Mary is the mediator of every priest. Beautiful moment, Jesus crucified under his cross, there was Mary, and there is also John. It's a beautiful exchange. Jesus, before his death, said to John, John, here is your mother. And to Mary, he said, Mother, here is John, your son. And every priest is entrusted to the care and custody of Mary. From my experience, I tell you, every temptation in priesthood is conquered. And every priest, in his turmoil of temptations, successful, victorious, hold in the hands of Mary. If Mary is with you, your priesthood will be safe. Your priesthood will be sure. And this beautiful day of institution of priesthood and Eucharist, Mary shall be our mother, our custodian. And God will bless our priesthood with all its limitations, with all our temptations, if you are faithful to the call of Jesus and the care and custody 
of Mary. May God bless you. Amen.